Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to do a quick video to let you know about kind of our last big topic in this chapter. Well, it's not a big topic, but that topic is buffers. And it does bring up this idea. So we've been talking about assets. We've been talking about bases. We've been talking about putting them together. And the last thing I want to talk about is this thing called a buffer. And what a buffer is, is it's a system, because it's composed of more than one thing, that resists a change in pH. So here's the idea. If I were to take, say, a beaker of water, whose pH is, pH is 7, if I were to put an acid in it, for example, what I would find is that after the acid, the pH would plummet. So let's say that the pH of water is pH of 2. Or if instead of adding an acid, I added a base, I would find that the pH would have gone up. So the pH will dramatically change. But the idea with this thing called a buffer is that if I have a buffer solution, and let's say that the pH of my buffer solution is 5. So it doesn't have to be neutral. This literally could be any number right here. But if I add an acid to my buffer system and I recheck the pH, so after the acid, I recheck the pH, the pH is still around 5. It, it may not be, you know, if, if this first one was 5.0, you know, maybe I find that this one is 4.9. So maybe it changed a little bit, but it didn't change dramatically like the other. So the question that we have is like, well, how is it able to do that? So if I have something that can resist a change in pH, like when I add an acid, it does it to get acidic. When I add a base, it ends up being basic. That means there must be something in there to make it. So if in my buffer system, I can add an acid and it essentially gets neutralized, that means there must be a base in there. And because it's a buffer, if I were to add a base, the pH wouldn't dramatically change, which means there must be an acid in there. So my buffer system must contain both a base and an acid. So then, of course, the question becomes, well, why don't they neutralize each other? And you're right, because most of the time, an acid and a base will neutralize each other but it's because of the type of acid and base it's made of. So a buffer is actually made of one of two possibilities. It could be made up of a weak acid and, and this is where it becomes very specific, it's conjugate base. Conjugates don't neutralize each other. They may be at equilibrium with each other, but they do not neutralize each other. So that's one possibility. So an example might be like acetic acid, Hc2H3O2. So think about what it would its conjugate look like. That's what's left after it loses the hydrogen ion. So C2H3O2 minus, that would be its conjugate base. So if I put these two things into a beaker, it would make a buffer. Or the other possibility could be a weak base, the exact opposite of this, and it's conjugate acid. So an example might be, say, ammonia. That's a weak base. Now you might ask yourself, do I know what the conjugate acid would be? Remember, they differ by one hydrogen ion, and it would gain a hydrogen ion, so it would become NH4+. So if I put those two things in a beaker, I would make a buffer and have both an acid and a base. So let me just show you kind of quickly how that works. So let's say that I made a buffer that have, has acetic acid, HC2H3O2, and maybe I put in um, some sodium acetate, which is going to dissolve and break apart. So I have C2H3O2 minus, and then there's some sodiums in there. As just a spectator, I am. I don't care about that. But notice I have both of those things. So if this is my buffer, and it's got both of those in there, let's say if I add an acid, 
So, right, I'm adding something that's contributing H plus. If I add an acid, it's going to react with the base part of the buffer. Well, the base is this. That's my conjugate base. So I'll react my acid with the conjugate base. C2H3O2 minus. This is acid plus base, so it goes to completion. And I get H3H3O2. You might be like, yeah, but you added an acid and you made an acid. But remember what the pH is a measure of. The pH is the negative log of the H+. plus. So what did I do? It basically took the H+, plus and it wrapped it into this molecule. Well, then it couldn't really change the pH. Or let's say that I add a base to the buffer. So some sort of OH- minus contributor, right? Well, a base is going to react with the acid part of the buffer. So my acid part of the buffer is the acetic acid. So I'm going to react my base, OH minus, with the acid, HC2H3O2. Goes to completion, right? Acid plus base. This grabs an H. We form water. And I get the C2H3O2 minus back. Well, you guys, OH minus could have made it more basic. But what we do is we react it, and then it's gone. All right, that pretty much wraps up buffers. The only other thing I want you to be aware of is this terminology called buffer capacity. It's basically, buffers are not unlimited. Buffer capacity has everything to do with how much of each did you put in? Because at some point, I can't just keep adding acid. If it runs out of the conjugate base, it won't be able to buffer it. So buffer capacity refers to there is a limit to how much acid or how much base you can add um, before the pH will start to change. So there is a limit to how much acid or base can be buffered. And that's the buffer capacity. And it just depends how much of the acid and conjugate base or base and conjugate acid you put in. And that's all I've got for you guys. Sorry, that's a little bit noise at my screen.